How's it going guys? So I'm actually filming this video after if you watch the second one in order. Um, this is after, or actually that one kind of gave me an idea for this. So what we're going to start here with is you have a hatchling uh, gargoyle. You have something that's still, you know, under six grams. And you want to make sure you can provide the best care for it. But what I'm going to do is my way um, when I have multiple animals, it's simple and it's effective and it keeps the animal healthy and your cost down as well. So uh, what I'm going to go over, this is going to be the start of them. I'm going to do a, basically a video for each stage that they go through. Um, so this is just the start. Whenever you guys get that new gargle, maybe it's a little baby. I mean, a lot of times I know people will sell them, you know, down the line, but let's just say you're in that situation. You have something that's pretty much under six grams and you want to make sure you can take the best care of it. So what I'm going to show you guys, simple, effective. This is just my way. It's not necessarily the right way or the wrong way or anything like that. This is just worse for me. So first, first things first, tub. Okay. Another one I probably got from Target or Walmart or something like that. Six quarts. 14 by 7 by 4. It's real simple. This is for a small animal. Remember, they don't need all this space to run around when they're tiny. Or you want to keep it simple. You don't want to keep them in you know, a little belly cup. But you want to make sure that everything is compact they feel secure, they feel safe, it's easy to find their feet. Real simple formula. All you're gonna do, one strip of paper towel. This actually fits this perfectly. Um, so just get one strip of paper towel, cork tube. We'll take this any day over the cork flats because it gives them something not to climb on top of, but also hide into and feel secure, and it's somewhere dark as well. So this is awesome. Um, guys, go, if you have, you know, a uh, reptile expo near you, you can always find someone selling something like this. Um, and they're pretty inexpensive as well. If not, uh, my recommendation, if you have a pet store, honestly, you will overpay um, for these. But if it's what's available, go for it. Third option, go online. Um, my recommendation is Pangea. Now, I buy that uh, cork bark from Pangea in bulk, so it comes minimum as five pounds um, with it. You probably don't need that much if you just have one, but, uh, you know, whatever works for you guys. So, ready? One side of the um, tank. I'm going to keep everything towards one side, so that way they know that's the side that they, you know, feel secure at. Um, this is also the side that a lot of times I'm going to make this, when I put this back in the rack, this side is facing the wall. This is me over on this side. This side is facing the wall. So that way they know this side, they don't have to worry about, you know, people walking by or anything like that. One thing I forgot to mention too, is just the holes in here. Start simple with your holes on here. Be careful with the plastic. It cracks easy. Um, I always recommend if you're able to just use something that can melt it um, or you can do something like that where you cut a little hole in there, use some hot glue, some of this screen um, on there, it helps. My recommendation, start off simple, don't go overboard on the holes, you can always add more. If you notice that the cage is still, you know, after one day of spraying, when you wake up that next morning, you check in on them. And the cage is still pretty wet. Okay, start, you know, making a couple more holes, but you can always add more. So that's important. Start simple at first. Add more if you're testing it out. If you can do that before you have the animal, even better. If not, they're very hardy. Um, just don't let it go on for a long period of time. So all we're going to need, cork bark. This right here is not even a full plant. It's cut off. Because I can buy a large um, one of these and, you know, make four of these out of them. So then that works for four different babies. It's simple. It provides them some cover, some, you know, landscape to climb on. What I'm going to do, you know, place it however you want to place it in there. Third thing, just the 
It's just the actual gargoyle. This guy, honestly, I don't know his exact weight, but it's probably maybe like four grams. This is one that I bred. He hatched uh, 916. So he's about three months old. He's not fresh, um, a little baby. You know, he's actually grown really well. So the next video will be the next step once they hit um, basically anywhere between six to 10 grams. I'll move them into the next enclosure. But this is really all you need to be successful with them. All right. In my experience, again, this is just works. what works for me. If something to hide on, climb on. This side, I'm going to put their food. I'm keeping all the decorations towards one side of the enclosure so they know that's the side that they, you know, can hide on. They feel secure on that. Um, and then you know, spray them once a day. Feed them the Pangea two, three times a week. Um, give them insects one to two times a week on top of that. But really, if you guys want to be successful, this is really all you need. Don't overcomplicate it. This is going to make sure you guys don't have to stress about them not eating or anything like that. You know, you see the poop down in the uh, paper towel. This is going to be cost effective because my recommendation is if spending the, you know, $200, $100, however much it is on an enclosure is going to put you at the top of your budget, don't do it. I'd rather you... Okay, this might be less eye appealing up front at first. Save your money, then upgrade them to, you know, a nice um, enclosure. But also understand, too, they're going to outgrow this in a few months. So you're going to have to buy a new glass enclosure anyways for that. Um, but my recommendation is save your money, get something like this, and then invest into the care of the animal. You know, having the right supplies, the right diet, buying the insects, the cork bark, the plants, all of that. I'd much rather someone put their money into that than trying to get a, you know, really expensive enclosure and, you know, lack in those other areas. So if you want to be successful, gargoyle gecko keeper, and you want to make sure it's cost effective, but also the animal is thriving, Right, this is all you need. Don't make it too big. It's going to stress them out. Don't make them too small. You know, that goes without saying. Um, and then that way, save you some money. The animal's going to grow great. You guys are going to be happy. You're going to have more money. So now when you need to make that upgrade, it's going to be there. Like I said, uh, in the, well, like I will say in the next video, you're, the best thing to do for these isn't to buy a and all be all cage. The best thing to do for them is to upgrade as they get bigger. So, God bless me. All right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, just buy it. You know, upgrade as they get bigger. That's the best way that they're gonna thrive. So, sorry, I'm kind of new to making these videos. So sorry if it. Uh, Sounds bad or anything like that. We're just going with the wind. It'll get better over time. Follow me on Instagram at Red Rack. That's the best way to connect with me. Shoot me messages. Ask me. Sometimes I'll have a couple available. Things like that. But thanks for watching.